I'm Tony Maselli. I'm here about the job. Oh, I'm sorry. There must be a mistake. This job is for a housekeeper. That's me, Mr. Goodmop. <laughs> It was one of the most popular sitcoms of the 1980s. Hey, ladies! I'll never forget it. We did a 21 rating. So it was like 30 million people. For eight seasons, Who's the Boss kept audiences laughing with hilarious writing, great chemistry, and a bold premise. You could call me the maid, but I wouldn't. <laughs> but when it works, there's so many factors that have to dovetail. Lightning in a bottle. <laughs> Now, 30 years later, EW is bringing the entire cast together for an unforgettable reunion. All right, take off your clothes. <laughs> when we're together, it just no. feels like it was yesterday. The following program. Modern style. You know, I tell you what happened to me. You know, recently there was a a, a, a marathon. I mean, a, tele, a marathon. Who's the boss of the marathon? show? So I watched 19 episodes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who's the boss? Was created back in the early 80s by TV veterans Blake Hunter and Martin Cohen, who was fresh off his hit Silver Spoons. The pilot, about a retired professional baseball player turned housekeeper, was years ahead of its time. I mean, think about it. We're talking about 1984, so a guy, you know, cleaning the house for this woman and living in the house, you know, it was a, was kind of a, you know, it was a, a big step deal. Forward. Yeah, it was and a, a big divorced deal. single mother right. who owned her own business, who was the president of her right. own business. I mean, this was, this was, did not exist then. No, and it was, and, it was very, very, and we think it did, but it, it didn't. And I, young women come up to me all the time and say, I. I realized that that was show was an incredibly cutting edge show for for that time. Well, I, I just told Wendy that I was really glad that uh, I hired you. <laughs> this may surprise you, but when I was a kid, I never thought I'd grow up to be a housekeeper. <laughs> I read this thing and I said, "This is funny." It was funny. This is funny. You read something like that and you go, "Oh, I could be funny in this." And that's how I felt about the script when I saw it. How could you leave New York? So I borrow bridge. The show always gave, it always made people feel good in some way. It taught people something without being didactic. Kids today, they got no model. There was a model, you know what I mean? We grew up on Leave it to Beaver and Father Knows Best, and so we saw that we didn't want to do that, but we also didn't, we, we really were determined to send a good message. How could a woman make enough money to afford a great house like this? Well, I mean, she works hard and she's real smart. Hey, you could do the same thing. I can? Sure. Once ABC greenlit the show, the first person cast was 33-year-old Tony Danza to play housekeeper Tony Maselli. The character Tony had been a professional baseball player who was living in Brooklyn with his daughter at the time. Ironically, he was looking for a better life for her. Of course, now Brooklyn is like a super hot spot and everybody loves it, but back in the 80s, Brooklyn was maybe a little rougher. So he was looking for a new beginning for him and his daughter, and he found a job basically being a housekeeper for an ad executive. I got a great job at a great place. It's all green with picket fences. But you always said you love New York. Yeah, but I love my daughter a lot more. Tony Danza was actually the person that they built the ensemble around. He came to fame, of course, on Taxi. Why don't you shut up, huh, Latka? <laughs> Why don't you shut up? <laughs> hey, Latka, you shut up or I'm gonna knock you out. How's that? I wasn't working. It was about a year and a half after Taxi. I, I was really going crazy. I, I did a love boat where I played a Japanese guy. I was ready to kill myself. Hi. Hi. You have nice muscles in your smile. <laughs> so the, my agent called me up and go in, and there were three shows they talked to me about. They said, in one, I was a tough New York City detective. In another, I was a heroic helicopter pilot, a daring helicopter pilot. And the third, I was a housekeeper for a woman and her mother and her son. And I went, this is the show. Uh, how many jobs have you had as a housekeeper? One, if I get this. I was involved in now in the cast. And the most important thing, and I mean it, when you do one of these shows, the most important thing is finding the right woman. The girls, everything, and she was the, the anchor of it. So we read like six of the top TV actresses at the time that came in and I did a scene with them. With her, I checked her out. She went like, what are you looking at? You know, she caught me. And that was it. I said, oh, well, she's the girl. So Judith Light actually cut her acting chops in theater and then she transitioned into soaps. She was on One Life to Live and actually won a couple Emmys for that. It's not true, it's not true. Katrina came to me, she told me she knew who killed Margaret. 
she was coming from the soap opera world, and she wasn't sure if she wanted to do a sitcom. I did an audition with Tony, and it was it was such a great experience because I hadn't wanted to do a sitcom. I mean, oh yes, I, she thought she was who she is now then. <laughs> I am not inflexible. I have never been inflexible. If there's one thing I cannot tolerate, it's inflexibility. <laughs> Catherine Heldman played Angela's mom, Mona, who's sort of this sexy cougar before cougars were really even a thing. I've been pinned. She was even a precursor to Golden Girls, so we hadn't really seen a, an older woman embracing her sexuality in the way that we did Mona, and I think that's really something that resonated with viewers. Oh my gosh. I found it. I remember reading the script, and I thought, well, this is a pretty good show, because uh, I had been in good shows. In good shows, that's, that's yeah. Yeah. holy mackerel. Uh, yeah. Catherine Heldman was really a huge star in the 70s in the, in the seminal show Soap. Chester, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> okay. You, you don't mind if I go to the bathroom? I remember when Catherine, when we, when we heard that we got her, because, you know, I was in love with Catherine Helmet from, from Soul. I was crazy about her, and I couldn't believe she was coming on the show. You know, we were really, really, really excited. And, and, uh, and everybody, I mean, it was like a big deal. You know, it was a big deal. Judith, we were like, eh. But, but Catherine, no, no, I'm only kidding. Hello, Mrs. Bauer. Alyssa Milano was 10 years old when she auditioned for the pilot, and she was going to be this sort of tomboy daughter of Tony Danza's. She was fresh on the scene. We hadn't really seen much from her up to this point. So this was really a breakout role for her. I remember I didn't know anything about the show. All I knew it was with the cute guy from Taxi, because that's what my mom told me about it. So, and I was going in to play for, you know, his, his she daughter. Was 10. I was 10 years old. What was that all about? Sex. <laughs> Rounding out the cast was eight-year-old Danny Pintaro, who had already been in a major motion picture, the movie Cujo. Not a monster, it's a <laughs> he played Angela's young son, Jonathan, so he was, of course, the cute comic relief on the show. Hey, Mom, I've got something great for show and tell. Well, that's nice, sweetheart. What is it? Here. <gasps> My God, what is that? A tattoo, Mom. Just like Tony's got. <laughs> Watch her wiggle. <laughs> One of the things that I'm most proud of is these two. I mean it because, you know, it's tough. Kids in, kids in TV shows, who knows what happens. And, and we ended it's up with two of the best. Two of the best. We came two through. The they he, raised, he raised her too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Boss premiered on September 20th, 1984. At first, the show struggled to find an audience, but the cast knew they had something special. Tony and I had chemistry instantly. But every one of us had chemistry. The two of them had chemistry. Oh, yeah. We had chemistry. Yeah, yeah. We had chemistry. She and Tony had chemistry. So it, was, it wasn't just one part of it. That we, it was all, you know, what Tony's talking about is that kind of lightning in a bottle. Do you guys remember the episode where Tony takes you to buy a bra? He wanted the pink ball. Why? Because everyone's going to see it. Hey, who's going to see it? You're famous, right? No. You're that good-looking Italian guy, right? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Who's the Boss aired for eight seasons and pulled in 20 million viewers a week. But that's not the way it started out. What happened was the first year we, uh, we struggled. And they, they took us off. They took us off in... Uh, in November, right before Thanksgiving, I called up Lou Ehrlich, who was the head of the ABC, and I said, Lou, how could you send this for all these people home not knowing if they have a job for the holidays? And he went, Tony, I don't know if I have a job for the holidays, you know? <laughs> so it was crazy. Over that summer, they moved us to 8 o'clock, and we started to grow, and then when we opened, it was against the 18. I said, well, you better tell Mr. T to hock some of that gold, because he's in trouble. And so we came on that night, and we did, and I'll never forget it, we did a 21 rating. So it was like 30 million people. 
And I went to an ABC party like the night after the show was on, and I was king. By 1985, the show cracked the top 10, where it would remain for the next four seasons. Along the way, the critically acclaimed sitcom was nominated for 30 awards, including 10 Emmys and five Golden Globes. Do you guys remember the episode where Tony takes you to buy a bra? I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was just looking for a bra. I mean, for my daughter. This was at a time that we could only say bra once. Or you could only oh, wow. say it at all. No, you could only say it one time. Once, one time. And then we had to come up with different things. And they came up with the best thing ever, which was incredibly funny, which he kept saying, I have to buy her a foundation garment. I take it this is her first foundation garment? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, mine, too. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, it was hilarious. I wanted one like Marcy's with a little pink bow in the middle. <laughs> you wanted the pink bow? Why? Because everyone's going to see it. Hey, who's going to see it? You know, and then I'd walk down the street and get recognized, and people would be like, that bra episode. <laughs> you know, oh, you're getting older, you're growing up. You know, and it was just like, oh, so mortified. We dedicated a show to my father. That one, I, I dedicated my one. show. I have an apartment in Brooklyn, and she thinks I'm keeping a good somebody in the apartment. I'm like, I have some girlfriend, you know, and really it's just my father's apartment. I can't get rid of it. But we go there, and, and I spill some, some ashes that were on. And she, of course, thinks it's my father. You know, my father's <laughs> ashes. So I get a dustbuster and I start cleaning it up. And she goes, ah, what are you doing? Really okay. sorry. Okay. No. <gasps> Tony! Oh, no! No! Angela, this is from the fireplace! Oh. I hated every Jonathan episode. <laughs> I hated them. Oh. Yeah, because every single one was that I had done some sort of stupid thing. Does it hurt, honey? Oh, only when I bump into things. <laughs> there was Harried Housekeeper. That was a funny one, where I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to switch places yeah, with you. Places with of course you can't do it. Could not. It's kind of, uh, kind of nice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> While America was falling in love with the Bowers and the Maselli's, behind the scenes, the cast was creating their own family bond. I hope you don't mind me saying this, Kat, that she was like the sister I never had, and she was like my soulmate. And, and during those years, those are the years I'm running around Hollywood, then I got married, I have kids. He really was like a uh, great influence on me. And it really helped me to uh, all of us to, yeah. to calm down and, and see what was important. What was important in life. Everything that I did before, I felt like an actor or I felt like a hired person. That's but right. when the show started, it literally felt like family. Tony really took responsibility for that. And on Wednesday mornings, mm -hmm. we would all come in, mm -hmm. and he would have read all the newspapers, and he would <laughs> do current events mm -hmm. with the kids, That's true. so that they would. Be, I mean, the the menches that they are today have a lot to do with that because we were their home away from That's home. That's right. These people are responsible for raising me as much as my own family because we were together. I was 11 to 19 years old. That's it. That's your that's your entire formative years. I used to get in fights all the time because I'd go into a store and some guy would be there and go, hey, I really like your daughter. At least she's really cute. I go, you moron. She's 12. What are you, crazy? I used to say I had two Italian fathers. Uh, yeah. My own and this one. I can't help it if I'm so overprotective. What can I say? I'm sorry. I'm Italian. <laughs> and I'm sorry I yelled at you, but what can I say? I'm Italian too. <laughs> I was required to bring in all of my report cards. Oh, yeah. And and so the you know it's like it's like my parents just as important that I do good in school so that when I brought it in, not do, only was do, it my do well, parents do well, do well in school. In school. <laughs> and there it is. We all learn stuff from each other, for sure. And they kept us, we all keep each other grounded. I think that's what grounded. She you kept you grounded. You taught me how to play baseball. Basketball, basketball. Basketball, tap dance. Tap dance. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know, can you guys do it? You can't do it. Can I can do it. Can you do it? I could probably do, you do it. it. You want to see it? You want to see the tap dance? A five, six, seven, eight. Oh, my God. Oh, that part I lost. <laughs> oh, we did it. 
yeah, every two, day. Two hundred episodes. Twice. I used to make them do it. I used to make them do it in front of the audience. Come on, dance with me. Yeah, How many episodes did we do? Who's the Boss ran for 196 episodes. The secret to the show's staying power was the ongoing romantic tension between Tony and Angela. Who's the Boss was a big success because it really was one of those iconic stories of opposites attract. These two characters played off of each other so well because they were so different. There's no unseen force pushing us together. The chemistry between Tony and Angela was one of those will they or won't they that sort of got teased along. And I think the show did a really good job of keeping audiences waiting. They wanted to watch because they wanted to see if Angela and Tony would ever get together. There's one chance in a million that, that I could lose you. I don't want to take it. Why? Because I love you. <gasps> As the show was coming to an end, the big question was, will Angela and Tony get married? And producers decided to leave the ending a little bit ambiguous. After eight years, Who's the Boss came to an emotional end on April 25th, 1992. I don't want you to ever resent. Angela, the only thing I resented was being without you. You know what's interesting, though, is yeah. that people still think that the series finale yeah. was your wedding. Yes, yeah, you know. They, th they, they think it was wedding. your wedding. Was the it, was, that was, it was my oh, wedding, and you gave me away. Dad. Huh? Catch. <laughs> People think they that do? you guys yeah. got married. Yeah. Nobody, yeah, everyone thinks. You know why we didn't get married? Because you guys were always yeah. together. So. Because it wasn't the show. People sort of think that the show ended with Tony and Angela getting married when in fact they didn't. But I think that's just because people really wanted them to have a definitive ending and that's not really what the show is about. You know, it has a title with a question mark at the end. After briefly moving to Iowa for a coaching job, Tony surprises Angela in the finale. The show ended the way it began. What are you doing here? Well, I, uh, I heard you were looking for a housekeeper. Yeah, what, what, what are you doing here? Uh, I heard you were looking for a housekeeper. <laughs> what are your qualifications? <laughs> uh, well, um... <laughs> then, only one question remained. Who, in fact, was the boss? <laughs> it was always a question mark, and that's what I thought was so brilliant was about her. the yeah. show. She was the boss. She was really Catherine was the boss. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or sometimes it was the kids. I mean, it really fluctuated, and that was the beauty of the show. You got the job. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs>